Good morning, calculus class today. So this one is uh, part two for section 6.2, the dis and the washing methods. So we'll take a look at that, some of the problem. So find a volume of solid with the given conditions. So we do have y equals two over x, y equals zero, x equals one half, x equals two. So first thing that you probably want to do, you want to sketch the graph if that's a simple equation. So we sketch the graph first. So for two over x, it's a hyperbolic curve or it's a rational. So this will be considered going this way and going that way. But the boundary here, we have one half and two. So one half is somewhere over here, two, which is over here. And then y equals zero, which is the, the boundary as well, so which is the x-axis. But don't forget about the revolution axis. It's y equals zero, so it's revolving around that x-axis. So one thing that we notice is the indicator it's perpendicular to the revolution axis. Okay, so that means we're using the disk or the washer method. Okay, so if that's perpendicular, so that means this one's the vertical. If that's vertical, we're using dx. Okay, so the way to use the disk method, which is the general formula from a to b times pi r square of x times tx. So that's something we talked about previously. And then pi, the boundary from a to b, we do have one half all the way to 2, and then r squared, which is the function itself, which is this one here, and then we do have 2 over x, quantity squared, times dx. And then the rest of this, all you have to do is just integrate it. So we got pi, integral from 1 half to 2, so 4 over x squared, dx. And this one can be written as pi, integral from 1 half to 2, so it's 4, so 4, we can take that out as a coefficient, so it's x to the power of negative 2, dx. So integrate it by using the power rule. So we do have x to the power of negative 1, divided by negative 1, and it's bounded from 1 half to 2. So it's 4 pi times, so this one, 2 to the power of negative 1, which is 1 half, it's negative 1 half. Minus, and then what we got for the rest of this here, 1 half to the power of negative 1, so we do have 2, negative 2, so negative negative plus 2. So 2 minus 1 half, which is 1 and a half, 3 half. So 4 pi times 3 half. So we do have 6 pi. And that's the volume once you revolve this area over the x-axis. So basically this one is just like a sideway, it's called a sideway frustrum. Kind of like that, okay? So once you find a volume for this. Okay, so now let's look at that, the other example, what we got here. So this one is x equals negative y squared plus 3, x equals 2. So it looks like we do have a boundary from C to D. It looks like we're using dy for this. But now let's just sketch the graph first. So once you sketch the graph, we do have x minus 3 equals negative y squared. Negative, so multiply negative both sides. So we got negative x plus 3. So that equals y squared. Square root. So we do have square root of negative x minus 3, so it's uh, reflected over the x-axis. So we do have a graph like this with the vertex at 3, 1, 2, 3, but it's going back to the left. So it's going this way. And then another boundary that we have right here, which is 2. So x equals 2 is right here. is bounded right between the curve and the line. And this one is revolving around this x-axis. So that means we're using the this method also. Okay, so using the this method. The one thing that we need to do, we need to find out the, the difference between these two curves. Since we're not counting this part right here, so we need to subtract. So the right and the curve, which is the what? The curve right here, the radical. So it's negative y, to, uh, negative y squared plus 3 minus 2. So this whole thing right here will be considered r of x or r of y. 
So another formula that we have is uh, integral from c to d times pi, and it's f of y times dy. Uh, it's actually r y squared, excuse me, times dy. So what we're using here, this one is just a radius. So integral from 0 to 1. So we can say that from 0 to 1. The, the lower end bound and the upper end bound, so 0 to 1. So negative y squared plus 3 minus 2, and then quantity squared, and then times dy. Don't forget about pi, because that's for using the disk method. So this one right here, so we can simplify it a little bit. So negative y squared plus 1, quantity squared, pi is outside, it's a coefficient, from 0 to 1, dy. Expand it, so we got pi, integral from 0 to 1, so we do have y to the power of 4, minus 2y squared, and then plus 1, dy. Integrating it, so we do have y to the power of 5 over 5, minus 2y cubed over 3, plus y, and then it goes all the way from 0 to 1, but don't forget about the pi right there. Plug in 0, everything turns out to be 0, so there's no need to worry about that 0. So we just plug in 1, so we do have 1 fifth minus 2 third plus 1. So we do have 1 and 1 fifth, well, we'll just convert that to the same denominator. So we do have 15, 3 over 15, 10 over 15, and then 15 over 15. So negative 10 over 15 plus 15 over 15, we got 5 over 15 plus 3 over 15, so it's A over 15 times pi. And this one reaches the volume, okay? All right, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. So we got a disk method. Now what about for the washer method? So washer method is quite similar, but instead of dealing with one radius, we do have two radii, which is the outer radius, inner radius. So let's just refresh the formula that we have earlier, so for the previous video. So we do have pi, integral from A to B, and then it's capital R of X, quantity squared, minus little R of X, quantity squared, and then DX. So this one's the, for the vertical. And then for the horizontal. So one thing, just want you to be careful with this. When do we use the vertical? When do we use the horizontal? The DX is always considered the indicator. The indicator, it's always perpendicular to the revolution axis. So the indicator, it's always perpendicular. Okay. To the revolution axis. Okay, so same thing happened with that dy. So for the horizontal one, we do have from C to D. And it's capital R to Y, quantity squared minus little R to Y quantity square, and then times dy. So now, take a look at this one right here. So this one is the radicals of 1 minus x. Okay, so we write it, so we do have y equals negative quantity x minus 1, and then the other part of it, it's y equals negative, and then negative quantity x minus 1. I just want to put it into the transformational form. So they both started with the same vertex, which is 1. So this one right here is reflected over the x-axis, so it's going this way. And the other one is not just reflected over the x-axis, but also it's reflected over the y-axis. So besides going this way, it's going to be flipped. So one is positive, the other one is negative. So just like a side wave parabola for the conic section. And then get a part what we got here, x equals 0, so that shows the boundary, x equals 0, which is this line right here. So that means here's the shaded area. And the revolution axis is also around the, uh, x -ax uh, the y axis, x equals 0. So now this time we're using dy because that's a side wave. Again, the indicator, dy, it's always perpendicular to the revolution axis perpendicular, that means forms 90 degree angle. So we're using the second form, the horizontal one. So now, for those you might be wondering, how do we set up the, uh, the equation for this? 
So one thing that you want to do, you want to solve for x in terms of y first. Okay, so once you solve for x in terms of y, so we can integrate it. And also this one looks like it's bounded from, well, we still need to find out the boundary. Okay, so let's find the boundary. The way to find the boundary, so you want to set this one. Okay, so x equals 0. Plug in 0 for x, so we do have 1 and negative 1. So you just plug in 0 here, plug in 0 here, so you got 0. Subtract from 1, but square root of negative, uh, negative 1 times square root of 1, which is negative 1. And then right here, plug in 0, so you got positive 1. So that shows the value of C and D. So using the second form, so we'll find out what that is. So pi integral from c to d, negative 1 to 1. Uh, for those you might be wondering, out the radius, in the radius for this. Okay, so this one, let's just convert that to, in terms of y first. So once you solve for the function in terms of y, so that means isolating x by itself. So square both sides. So we got y squared equals 1 minus x. And the other part of it, it's which is the same thing, y squared equals 1 minus x, because once you square the whole quantity, the negative is gone. So we just solve for y, uh, so we just solve for x in terms of y, so now one more thing, so y squared minus 1 equals negative x. So that means negative, negative 1 times the quantity of y squared minus 1, okay? So that's what we're going to be using for the radius. And it looks like we do need to use two radii, but the thing is that once you come up with the same equation, it's only considered one radius. So it's negative one, quantity y squared minus one. And then square the whole thing. And this one's gy. So instead of using the washer method, so this one, we can just minimize it into a this method. So again, it looks like we do have two radii, but this one is the exact same equation, so that's considered one single radius. Okay, so the rest of this, all you need to do, expand it, integrate it, okay? Again, it's symmetrical, so you can find out part of the volume here, and then just multiply by two. And now, what about for the next one? So the next problem here, so for those you might be wondering, do I need to sketch the graph for this? Uh, it would be kind of difficult if you try to sketch the graph for this, you probably want to use the yx table, or using that the TI calculator for the inverse functions. But think about this one in the common sense way. So this one shows the boundary, and also it's, well, the given axis is the x, uh, the y-axis. So eventually the graph is going to be something like this. So x equals zero. So square root, so we do have two radii here. One is considered higher. And the other one is considered lower. So something like this. Okay, so the boundary. And the revolution axis is the x, uh, x equals zero, so which is this one right here. So basically we need to find out the volume of this solid if that's revolving around the uh, x-axis from negative power 6 to power 2. So this time we need to use the Walsham method. And as you can see that the amplitude, so this one is 2 but the other one is 1. So that means obviously this one is going to be higher. So it's more extended to the right hand side, to the right hand side here. So we're using this one as the outer radius and we're using this one as the lower radius or the inner radius. So integrating it, pi, out the radius square, so 2 square root of cosine of y, quantity square, minus square root of cosine of y, quantity square, okay, out the radius, quantity square, minus the inner radius, quantity square, with respect to y, or dy, and then the rest of that, if you simplified it first, so, so we got 4 cosine of y minus, so this one is cosine of y also. Okay. And then dy. It looks like this one we can combine the like term before you integrate it. Yeah, definitely we can combine the like term first. 
So which is 3 cosine of y? Okay. dy. So 3 is a coefficient, we can put it out. So integrals of cosine of y, which is sine of y. And this one, it goes all the way from, don't forget about the boundaries, from negative power 6 to power 2. Negative power 6 to power 2. Negative power 6 all the way to power 2. And using that f of tc part 2, so 3 pi times sine of pi over 6. Excuse me, it's supposed to be uh, pi over 2 right here for the upper bound. Minus sine of negative pi over 6. So sine of pi over 2, which is 1. And then negative pi, uh, next, minus sine of negative pi over 6. So minus sine of negative 30 degrees. So it's negative 1 half. Because that's in quadrant 4. So we got 3 half times 3 pi, which is 9 pi over 2. And that's the final volume. Okay, so make sure that you guys go back to uh, part one for the video. So for those of you having difficulty with the concept, so make sure that you understand the concept first. It's based off geometry. And then just watch that second part of the 6.2 again. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today. And I'll see you guys next time.